The assembly will now come to order. The chief clerk will call the roll. Assemblywoman Anderson. Assemblywoman Backus. Assemblywoman Bill Bray Axelrod. Assemblywoman Brown May. Assemblyman Carter. Present. Assemblywoman Cohen. Here. Assemblywoman Considine. Here. Assemblyman DeLong. Present. Assemblywoman Dickman. Here. Assemblyman De Silva. Here. Assemblywoman Duran. Here. Assemblywoman Glant. Here. Assemblywoman Gonzalez. Assemblywoman Gorlo. Here. Assemblyman Gray. Here. Assemblyman Gurr. Here. Assemblyman Hafen. Assemblywoman Hansen. Assemblywoman Hardy. Assemblyman Hibbets. Assemblywoman Howdigy. Assemblywoman Kasama. Assemblyman Koenig. Assemblywoman LaRue Hatch. Assemblywoman Marzola. Assemblyman MacArthur. Assemblywoman Brittany Miller. Assemblyman C.H. Miller. Assemblywoman Monroe Moreno. Assemblywoman Mosca. Assemblywoman Newby. Assemblyman Wynn. Assemblyman O'Neill. Assemblyman Orlicker. Here. Assemblywoman Peters. Here. Assemblywoman Summers Armstrong. Here. Assemblywoman Taylor. Present. Assemblywoman Thomas. Here. Assemblywoman Torres. Here. Assemblyman Watts. Here. Assemblyman Murek. Here. Assemblywoman Gonzalez. Speaker Yeager. Here. Assemblywoman Howdigy. Order of business one, Mr. Speaker. May the record reflect that Assemblywoman Gonzalez is here. Prayer. Almighty God, who was and is and is to come, as we gather here before the state legislator, we ask for your guidance and your blessings. We pray for unity and discernment as our leaders convene to make decisions that will impact the lives of countless Nevadans. We ask that you guide our lawmakers with wisdom and inspire them to work together for the greater good of all citizens. We pray for their endurance, that they would know how much we appreciate the importance of their efforts and that they do not tire of doing what is right. May they lead with integrity and a steadfast commitment to do justice, to love goodness, and to walk humbly before you. We also ask for your protection and your blessings upon our state, our communities, and all those who serve and protect us. May this legislative session be one of great success filled with the joy of knowing that they are doing the hard work to keep Nevada safe, prosperous, and upright in all her ways. We ask all these things in your holy and precious name. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Order Business 2, reading and approval of the journal. Carson City, Tuesday, May 2nd. Assemblywoman Howdigy. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I move to dispense with the reading of the journal and allow the chief clerk and speaker to make any necessary corrections and additions. You've heard the motion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, nay. Motion carries. Order Business 4, reports of standing committees. Mr. Speaker, your Committee on Legislative Operations and Elections, to which was referred to Sen Senate Joint Resolution Number 5, has had the same consideration of big leave to report the same back the recommendation due pass. Michelle Gorlo, Chair. Mr. Speaker, your Committee on Ways and Means, to which was referred Assembly Bill 464, has had the same consideration of big leave to report the same back with the recommendation men due pass submitted. Danielle Monroe Moreno, Chair. We'll go next to Order Business 15, remarks from the floor. Assemblyman Carter. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today I want to introduce, first off, James Halsey, a man that I've worked with since the early 2000s, first as an organizer and then as a business manager of IBW 357. And, please stand up, and I'm going to murder this name, Aaron Abara. Okay. <laughs> He's a representative of Southern Nevada Building Trades, and I rise today to present this proclamation to these representatives of Southern Nevada Building Trades in honor of Apprenticeship Day here at the legislature. Myself and Mr. Halsey here would have loved to have gone through the apprenticeship, but we weren't able to, so we had to fight our way into the unions through the organizing method. 
And I will say that in 1937, labor and management came together to pass the National Apprenticeship Act because they recognized that working men and women have value from day one and deserve to benefit from the concept of earn while you learn. And as we go forward looking at how to improve the pipeline of getting people into the workforce in those underserved areas through nursing and through teachers, we need to keep that in mind that maybe it's time to shift that system into what the trades have gotten right from the very beginning. Thank you very much. Assemblyman Gray. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm not sure uh, if he stepped out or if he's still in the building. Um, young man you introduced earlier, uh, Chaplain Major Shea Gilliam. Um, I just wanted to say that's a, a man I have the highest regard for. He actually worked for me while we were in the Air Force as a young staff sergeant and had come to me and said he wanted to go in the chaplaincy and he did it. And he is just such, he's been such an incredible leader, both faith-wise and militarily-wise. And uh, I just hope you guys all have the same, or can have the same respect for him that I do. And I hope to see him back here uh, time and again. But he is just one heck of a man. And uh, I'm so, so very proud of him. Assemblyman O'Neill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I have with me today a very wonderful and just a tremendous guest that I'm honored to introduce to you all, for those who don't know, is Pauline Lee from Las Vegas. Pauline is a member of the Keystone Corporation, an advocate for physicians and their families. She is Governor Lombardo's transition team member, and she's also Secretary of State Cisco Aguilar's appointee to the Advisory Board for a Participatory Democracy. Would you please make her feel welcome? Do we have any other order of business 15 at this time? Assemblywoman Howdy. One minute recess, Mr. Speaker. We will be in a one minute recess.
The assembly will now come back to order. At this time, I will appoint a committee of two consisting of Assemblywoman Torres and Assemblyman MacArthur to invite the Senate to meet with the assembly in joint session to hear a message from United States Representative Stephen Horsford. The committee will be about its business. And while they're about their business, we'll, we'll go back to order of 15 for some announcements. Assemblywoman Howdigee. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Some quick announcements for the floor while we are waiting for the Senate to arrive. I would like to remind the the members that tomorrow is Communities and Schools Day at the legislature. We also have the meat and drink at the Sutro Tunnel, and that's meats with an A, M-E-A-T. Please join our Gentum partners for some catered barbecue, some whiskey tastings, tours of the Sutro Tunnel, and period reenactments. Um, there, tomorrow is also Tyrone Thompson Day of Mentorship. Members, since we are not having floor, please feel free to join the Senate and sit in the gallery while they read the proclamation and present it to his family. We also have unity in our community in room 1214 from 9 a.m. to 1015 a.m. And on Friday, we have the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention and Olympia Companies Breakfast. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And we will be at ease while we await the senators. The assembly will come back to order. The members of the Senate are invited to chairs in the assembly.
The Secretary of the Senate will call the Senate roll. Senator Buck. Here. Senator Canizaro. Here. Senator Daly. Here. Senator Donate. Senator Dondera Loop. Here. Senator Flores. Present. Senator Goicachia. Here. Senator Hammond. Here. Senator Hansen. Here. Senator Harris. Here. Senator Krasner. Here. Senator Lang. Here. Senator Neal. Here. Senator Wynn. Here. Senator Orenshaw. Here. Senator Pizzina. Here. Senator Scheibel. Here. Senator Severs Gansert. Here. Senator Spearman. Here. Senator Stone. Here. Senator Titus. The Chief Clerk of the Assembly will call the Assembly Roll. Assemblywoman Anderson, Assemblywoman Backus, Assemblywoman Bilbray Axelrod, Assemblywoman Brown May, Assemblywoman Carter, Assemblywoman Cohen, Assemblywoman Considine, Assemblyman DeLong, Assemblywoman Dickman, Assemblyman De Silva, Assemblywoman Duran, Assemblywoman Gallant, Assemblywoman Gonzalez. Assemblywoman Gorlo. Here. Assemblyman Gray. Here. Assemblyman Gurr. Here. Assemblyman Hafen. Here. Assemblywoman Hansen. Here. Assemblywoman Hardy. Here. Assemblyman Hibbets. Here. Assemblywoman Hardy. Here. Assemblywoman Kasama. Here. Assemblyman Koenig. Here. Assemblywoman Lura Hatch. Here. Assemblywoman Marzola. Here. Assemblyman MacArthur. Here. Assemblywoman Brittany Miller. Here. Assemblyman C.H. Miller. Assemblywoman Monroe Moreno. Here. Assemblywoman Mosca. Here. Assemblywoman Newby. Here. Assemblyman Wynn. Here. Assemblyman O'Neill. Assemblyman Orrant Liquor. Here. Assemblywoman Peters. Here. Assemblywoman Summers Armstrong. Here. Assemblywoman Taylor. Here. Assemblywoman Thomas. Here. Assemblywoman Torres. Here. Assemblyman Watts. Here. Assemblyman Urich. Here. Speaker Yeager. Here. I will now appoint a committee of two consisting of Senator Spearman and Assemblywoman Monroe Moreno to wait upon United States Representative Stephen Horsford and escort him into the Assembly Chamber. The committee will be about its business. The appointed committee will escort Representative Horsford to the Chief Clerk's rostrum. Everyone please rise. Thank you so very much. It's an honor to be back here. I want to thank uh, Speaker Steve Yeager and Majority Leader 
Nicole Canasaro for accepting my request to address uh, the Nevada Legislature. Thank you to our Supreme Court Justices, uh, our State Constitutional Officers, uh, and all of you uh, for taking the time. I know this is a busy time, a month to go uh, before Sine Die, and it's a great honor uh, to be here as you commemorate the beginning of Asian American Pacific Islander Month. Um, and I know there was a basketball game last night. <laughs> I heard there may be some uh, sore members. Uh, and while the Democrats may have come up a little short, uh, it's great to see the camaraderie of that game and the charity uh, that you support continue. You know, it's great to be back here at the Nevada State Legislature. My first opportunity to serve in this body was as a legislative intern back in 1993 while attending college at the University of Nevada, Reno. I recall the opportunities that that internship afforded me to learn the importance and the role that this body plays and that each of you contribute to making the state of Nevada and the people in it better. I also recall not having a proper tie and literally being supported by some mentors who took me down the street to the local store to buy one so that I could come on the House floor. Years later, I would return to the legislature, becoming only the fourth African American elected in the state Senate, and then the first black Senate majority leader. <laughs> Fortunately, I may have been the first, but not the last. And it's great to see my Attorney General here, Aaron Ford, for all of his great work uh, but during the six special sessions and four regular sessions that I served, we were able to accomplish uh, great work. Work that you all are continuing to do and that you're doing right now. And I know, again, you got 30 days to go or, or more or less, so I'm not going to keep you long because I know uh, you're tired and ready to continue that great work. But I want to underscore, you're all public servants, the staff, that serve along with you to make this institution work, the great people of the state of Nevada. And I want to start by saying thank you for your service and for everything that you do for the state of Nevada. I'm now in my third consecutive term and fourth overall serving in the U.S. House of Representatives. And I'm honored to have been elected chair of the Congressional Black Caucus for the 118th session. The CBC is now comprised of 58 members, the largest in our history. It's representatives of, rep of representatives and senators that are all across this country from every region and ideological perspective. We are often cited as the conscience of the Congress because we are able to work with our colleagues on both sides of the aisle to remind each other of the real and human impact of the legislative proposals that we work to advance, from health care to reproductive justice, from veterans and military budgets to the investments in nutrition and retirement security for our seniors. Now, I'm now four months into my new term, and while uh, you know, it's keeping me quite busy, um, but I'm also really honored to be able to advance issues from voting rights to housing affordability to equitable job creation and economic opportunity to achieving public safety, whether from gun violence to police accountability, confronting discrimination against anti-Semitism and anti-Asian hate. Because all of us should agree, regardless of party, that all of our communities should be safe. Now, in the last Congress, we were able to accomplish many great legislative victories for our nation and right here for Nevada, like the bipartisan Safer Communities Law. 
Now, we have a real crisis in our nation, and sadly, right here in Nevada. The gun violence epidemic is taking countless lives, many of them of our young people, inflicting great trauma on our community and our families. Pew Research reports that the number of children younger than 18 killed by guns has increased by 50% from 2019 to 2021. Children 12 to 17 accounted for 86% of all gun deaths for those younger than 18 in 2021. 33 Nevada children aged 19 and younger died from guns in 2019. Now many of you know my personal story. I lost my father to gun violence when I was at college. I was a freshman. He was working at a, a convenience store when someone came in with a gun and shot him. I never got to say goodbye or to tell him that I loved him. And for too many families, that is the reality that they face every single day. That's why I have worked so hard to secure $250 million in community violence intervention funding and why I introduced the Break the Cycle of Violence Act. I was proud to see the community violence intervention programs included in the bipartisan Safer Communities Bill that we passed last Congress and that is now resulting in real community investments. In fact, my office just recently hosted a workshop with nonprofits and organizations and government entities here in Nevada on how we can tap our share of these resources. Our children must feel safe in school. Parents should feel safe sending them to school. And this epidemic of school shootings, along with gun violence in general, must come to an end. And I want to commend the work that you are doing in this legislature to continue to make gun safety a priority. Some of the other landmark bills that we were able to see uh, signed into law last Congress, like the Inflation Reduction Act, the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Law, the Chips and Science Law, are all providing real returns for Nevada as well. The Biden-Harris Investing in America agenda is creating jobs and churning our economy here in the Silver State, and I'm proud of the work that we'll continue to do. In fact, since President Biden took office, Nearly $8 billion in private corporate investment has been made here in Nevada. And thanks to those legislative efforts that we passed in the last Congress and that the President signed into law, we are creating good paying jobs, boosting U.S. competitiveness, and rebuilding our infrastructure. It's no longer infrastructure weak. Infrastructure is finally coming to our communities. Nevada, as you all know, is also poised to be at the forefront of our nation's clean energy economy. Lithium is essential to powering the electric vehicles of today and the future, and corporations know that. So we look forward to working with these companies as they invest in Nevada and with Nevadans. My only ask is when I talk to any of them, focus on jobs, focus on small businesses, and make sure that the impact you make is sustaining and long-term. Don't come to Nevada if you're not willing to invest in the long-term benefit of, of our state. Our state's unemployment rate is at 5.5%. We've added 239,300 new jobs, and we've seen 128,000 new businesses created here in Nevada. And all across the state, we have seen 103 new projects funded thanks to the bipartisan infrastructure law. Projects like the Regional Transportation Commission of Southern Nevada getting $6.7 million to buy hydrogen fuel cell electric buses to reduce emissions and to prevent health issues like asthma that disproportionately impact children and communities of color. And another $31 million investment in the Harry Reid International Airport, something that we will all need more of because of all the great sporting and entertainment events that are on deck over the next couple of years. Our legislation has also helped to lower real costs for Nevada families. Over 493,000 Nevada residents with Medicare 
will now benefit from the $2,000 yearly cap on out-of-pocket prescription drugs. This was my legislation that I've been pushing since 2019 and its real impact that's gonna save seniors thousands of dollars a year. We also won against Big Pharma by capping insulin at $35 per month. And now companies are extending the benefits so that a 10-year-old child who needs insulin can also have the life-saving medication that they need to stay alive. 96,000 individuals in Nevada signed up for the health insurance program through the Affordable Care Act during the last open enrollment period for 2023. And that is going to ensure that they benefit from up to thousands of dollars per year in savings from lower health care premiums. And I want to say, I want to thank and commend this legislature and to ask you and the governor to continue to prioritize efforts to keep Nevadans connected to their health coverage, either on Medicaid or on the Affordable Care Act marketplace, so that they can see their doctor, maintain the continuity of their health care, and avoid more costly care in hospital emergency rooms. Thank you for your leadership on this important issue. Now, the average new homeowner in Nevada will also save about $181 annually, or about 9.7% on their utility bills if this body and local governments across our state use new grants to adopt the latest building energy codes. Nevada residents will be el eligible to get 30% off solar panels, battery storage systems, heating and cooling upgrades, and weatherization, which can help them save hundreds of dollars every year on their energy bills. And it's estimated that about 75,000 additional Nevada households will install rooftop solar panels because of these new tax credits. Over 191,000 Nevada households can now access affordable and even free high-speed internet through the Affordable Connectivity Program investments that were also made as a part of this work. I recently had the opportunity to bring one of the FCC commissioners into my district and to speak directly with seniors at one of our housing uh, facilities. Many of these residents are eligible. They just needed help to sign up. And so I'm here to remind people, if you're on SNAP benefits, school lunches, Social Security, if you receive Social Security checks or housing vouchers, then you're likely eligible for the benefit. And I want you to know that my staff is willing to partner with anyone to make sure that we get people connected to this program. Because when they're connected to the internet, they're connected for their health care, for their work, to help home, homework with their child or their grandchild, and most importantly, to improve their quality of life. I'm also happy to hear about the efforts to create a lottery system for the state of Nevada, which has gotten further than any other efforts in the years past. When I was in this body, I led the effort then to try to establish a lottery program for our state, and I'm proud to see the hard work of my good friend, Assemblyman Cameron Miller, in leading this bill and to dedicate the funding for something as important as investing in access to mental health care. I also want to applaud efforts to improve pay and benefits for state workers. As I mentioned earlier, we are all public servants, and so are many of our staff that support the work here in Carson City and for many of the, uh, the work that is done throughout our state and local government offices. As a career, as career public service should be, it should be rewarded with good pay and good benefits, especially to keep from losing some of the great talent to the private sector. I also know that you all have been working really hard to make progress on some important issues around housing. In particular, bills to address transitional housing to help deal with the homelessness crisis that is very real throughout parts of our state. I recently had the opportunity to join the U.S. Vets for the ribbon cutting of one of uh, these much needed facilities. In fact, it's the Better Mint Community 
Bridge Housing Program, which is serving 46 residents at a time, 184 people per year. But it's more than just housing. It's getting them counseling and employment assistance and helping them get and keep these folks off the street and a roof over their heads. Our efforts on housing need to be laser focused. Residents in Nevada are really feeling the pinch of corporate speculators who are coming in and buying up homes, preventing veterans from using their VA to buy a home, or a first time home buyer who might be a single mom, from utilizing some of the programs that we've all worked to encourage around home ownership. These corporate speculators are paying cash and pricing out working families. That's why I introduced HR 702, the Home Act, to address some of the issues that are making home buying that more challenging. And I know that the people in my district, in North Las Vegas, in the Windsor Park neighborhood, are seeing their homes literally sink into the ground. So I applaud Senator Dina Neal for her proposal to help make sure that all the families in this area, mostly black and Latino families, all continue to have a roof over their heads in neighboring communities. And on Monday, on Monday, I'm leading efforts of the Tri Caucus. We have the Congressional Black Caucus, the Hispanic Caucus, and the Congressional Asian Pacific Islander Caucus. I'm actually convening them for a summit on affordable housing this Monday in Las Vegas. And we look forward to hearing the recommendations that will help Nevadans and the policies that you all are advancing to actually make those policies um, part of a national conversation to confront the crises of affordable housing and homelessness in our country. We must continue to invest in our people. They need jobs. They need homes. Together, we can create the job training that they need, along with the child care our families require, to be able to work and achieve the American dream. We must focus on the economic success of our communities, where many of our constituents feel the most frustration towards government. They want to see our action on housing assistance, child care, and the child tax credit, and creating new jobs that improve their quality of life. It was this place, this very chamber, that gave me the mentoring and, yes, the tie that I needed to even come onto this floor. I am extremely proud to continue to represent Nevada, and I want you to know that I will continue to work hard to make sure that Nevada and Nevadans have the support that they need. Thank you so much for the opportunity to address you. I look forward to your continued partnerships to deliver for all Nevadans. God bless you. Senator Krasner, please. Mr. Speaker, I move that the Senate and Assembly in joint session extend a vote of thanks to Representative Horsford for his timely, able, and constructive message. Assemblyman Miller. I second that motion. You've heard the motion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, nay. Motion carries. The appointed committee will escort Representative Horsford to the bar of the Assembly. Assemblywoman Summers Armstrong. Mr. Speaker, I move that the joint session of the Senate and Assembly be dissolved. Senator Hansen. I second the motion. You've heard the motion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, nay. 
Motion carries. I declare the joint session dissolved. The assembly will come back to order. Assemblywoman Howdigy. Thank you so much, Mr. Speaker. Seeing no other of business before us, I move that the assembly stand in adjournment till Monday, May 8th at the hour of 11.30 a.m. Assemblywoman Howdigy has moved that the assembly stand adjourned until Monday, May 8th, 2023 at the hour of 11.30 a.m. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, nay? Motion carries. We are adjourned.